Ah, Sonic the Hedgehog. You know, these days it seems like some people either love him or they love to hate him. And to be honest, who can blame him? I mean, the games, basically right from conception, have been a roller coaster in terms of quality. Some games have been exceptionally good, other games have been pretty... So, uh, I figured, you know what, with uh, Sega releasing this game, Sonic Lost World to the PC, I figured why not take a chance, kick off my new reviewing show, and give it a crack, see what it's all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, hope you all enjoy, hope you sit back, grab some popcorn, and hope you all enjoy as I take a look at Sonic Lost World on Steam. Ignore the fact this is a Wii U box, I... It's a digital game, so it's, you know, just pretend this says Steam on it. The game starts off as Dr. Eggman, the main villain of the franchise, has been capturing all of these little critters and chucking them into capsules in order to store them for future use in terms of turning them into his deadly machines, the Badniks. Bunnies to Badniks! Instant army! Sounds a little familiar, huh? As such, Sonic and his best buddy Tails take to the skies in order to take the good doctor down. After a heated battle for the encapsulated animal critters, the hero's plane is dealt a knockout blow resulting in Eggman ultimately getting away. However, this leads them to the mysterious Lost Hex. Or as I like to think of it, Sega's excuse to use the similar planetoid level design that is normally, you know, that is present in Super Mario Galaxy's games. Although, it does, it does resemble a striking resemblance to the old classic cancelled Sonic game, Sonic Extreme on the Sega Saturn. Although that could just be, that could just be a uh, complete coincidence, so, you know. It also doesn't feature the same level of gravity focus that the said Mario game does. So, what is the Lost Hex? Why is it here? It's never answered. However, moving on, Sonic and Tails have to move through this place, destroying bandits and rescuing animal critters while attempting to stop the good doctor's schemes. However, shortly into the game, we are introduced to the Deadly Six, which are basically six bad guys that Dr. Eggman has, uh, he has acquired some control over through the use of a magic conch shell. This doesn't explain much either. So for the sake of uh, keeping things moving on, I'm just going to sit down and say, a wizard did it. That's the best excuse you're going to get out of me. A wizard did it. These guys serve primarily as our boss fights throughout the course of the game, and they all basically revolve around one personality trait each. Essentially, they are all pretty much one-note characters with very little to add to the overall cast and crew of the game. For example, there's the crazy dude, the fat dude, the old but wise dude, and the girl, to name a few of them. And that's... Basically, all the character traits are, are, are meant to be. They're never elaborated on beyond these set archetypes. And for the most part, all this sort of stuff makes me feel that the storyline at some point during the development was compromised. There seems to be a lot of exposition dialogue missing. There seems to be a lot. There needs to be a lot more added to it, in my personal opinion. So what exactly is the deal with the Lost Hex? Oh, wait, I did it! And who are these mysterious Deadly Six? Oh, where's that get it? And what exactly is the deal with Conch Shell? You guessed it, Sunny Jim. Oh, where's that did it? Though while obviously the plot isn't the first reason that people would go to a Sonic game, having something so bare bones and seemingly incomplete just... It just seems like the writers had no idea what to go do with the actual plot. They had no idea where they were going. In fact, now that I mention it, I've noticed a couple of times where it seems like the writers behind the storyline went into this franchise fresh with no prior knowledge. And one particular instance is where Tails questions Sonic's loyalty as a friend to him, and it just it's so out of character, you know? Although I have noticed that Tails in particular in this game does come across as a lot more arrogant as he has done in the previous entries, which, I don't know, it, it kind of bugs me a little bit. Moving on to the core game itself, these levels are all split up into seven separate zones, each of which carry their own unique theme. However, most of these themes still sort of follow the same tones as the tried and true themes you, you, you would usually find during the course of Super Mario games. For example, you'll find yourself progressing through the grassland, the desert, the beach, the iceland, jungle, 
sky, and of course, lava. Although within each of these zones, levels are split up into four separate acts, usually carrying their own gimmick. You know, they usually carry their own gimmicks throughout the course of them. In which you will need to speed through, climb up, jump over, snowball through, explore around, grind, and fly? As you can probably guess from that little list, there is a lot of variety in the gameplay, which honestly brings the game down a little bit. Now, this is primarily due to the fact that the, the more gimmicky levels in the game, they don't feel quite as polished as the standard stages that you'll end up venturing through, giving this game a sort of uh, experimental feel. Though, for the most part, you will be running through either a 3D or 2D environment, destroying Dr. Eggman's minions whilst attempting to explore in order to rescue his, you know, all your animal critter friends that are encapsulated. With the majority of the levels containing numerous multiple pathways, however, to traverse through in, you know, typical Sonic the Hedgehog fashion, is a bit of a staple of the franchise at this point, so I'd be shocked if that it wasn't multiple paths, you would probably find the game to be pretty replayable. Especially if you're the kind of person of the speedrunning variety, because finding the quickest routes of each of the stages, it can be a real treat to do so. Although alongside the mooks and critters that are littered amongst these stages, you'll also be offered the chance to collect red rings. Now, as opposed to the standard rings that normally keeps Sonic alive, these are pretty much entirely optional. However, collecting all of these within each zone will award you with a Chaos Emerald. Collect all seven Chaos Emeralds and you will have access to Super Sonic, who is basically, he's pretty much an unkillable machine for the most part. Hell, he even gives Sonic the boost ability back from Unleashed Colors and Generations, so if you think this game lacked the boost, don't worry, you can still get hold of it through one method or another. In fact, most of Sonic's general moveset is slightly different this time around, as he replaces his ever so popular boost power in his base form with the old trusty Spin Dash, that was introduced way back in his second outing. Although while most folks seem to complain about this, honestly I don't mind. And this is simply because a spin dash fits this style of game a lot more than the boost does, you know, it's a little bit more controllable than the boost. And uh, there's definitely a greater emphasis in the gameplay for standard platforming and just exploring the levels as opposed to GOTTA GO FAST! Also, Sonic's homing attack, his previous method of attacking enemies in 3D titles, it's gained a little, a significant buff allowing you to charge up the attack to deal more damage onto a single mook, or you can lock onto multiple enemies at once and let it rip. Yes, die you fiend! <laughs> yeah, that was meant to be an evil laugh, what of it? So you do a better evil laugh than that. However, to combat the powered up nature of this attack, Sega have added new enemies to this game that cannot be dispatched by merely booping them on the head. For these specific mooks, you'll need to utilize Sonic's new kick move, which will stun the enemy before you are able to give him a good whack with the homing attack. Now, of course, you can use this move as well on standard mooks and in order to kick them into other mooks that are in front of you to uh, clear your ultimate pathways so you can get on through with the stage with less hassle. Also joining Sonic's arsenal of death are the Wisps. Now these, li these are little aliens that basically debuted way back in Sonic Colors and they serve as one of your special abilities in order to combat challenges that Sonic may face throughout the levels. For example, you have the laser power to blast off at maximum speeds and bounce from, and bounce from place to place using a number of placed diamond thingies. That's the best explanation I got for them, so don't expect anything else. You also have the Eagle, which allows you to soar through the sky, avoiding any ground-based obstacles. The Drill to... Uh, duh, to drill through the floor. You have the Hover ability to hover over hazardous areas. And it also doubles as a light speed dash power, which allows Sonic to dash across a trail of rings to avoid very dangerous portions of a level. Rhythm, which is the second worst wisp in the game. Yeah, truth be told, it is only the second worst wisp in the game because the final wisp I'm going to be talking about is literally useless. There, there is no benefit to it being in the game. It just exists, therefore it is. And also the only mandatory one out of the lot, which can be used to cross loads of gaps. The controls of this thing, I can't really figure out how it works properly, however, because what you're meant to do is you're meant to push the jump button and the, the wisp will uh, go from point A to point B. However, occasionally, 
I come across a bunch of issues where I'll get stuck on the environment and sometimes I'm able to make the I'm able to make the gaps with no issues. Other times the game can screw me over using this thing. I really don't like this wisp. It drives me mad. And finally you have the black bomb wisp. Which is basically a bomb. It explodes. Yeah. You know, truth be told, I have no idea what this thing's meant to be used for. And the only way you're likely going to come across it is if you complete the Nightmare Zone DLC. And this is basically the reward for completing that. This time around as well, Sonic is also packing a suitcase. Allowing you to hold a number of power-ups for use later during the levels. Whenever you feel necessary. Though I rarely use this feature, it is a, it is a nice way of having classic power-ups such as the Lightning Shield pop into the game. And, you know, just, just old references to these classic games, they always make me happy. However, missing from the Wii U version, surprisingly, are a number of circus tents. These on the Wii U offer the minigame that allows you to grind for animals because every fourth act of a zone is locked by an arbitrary number of animals that you will need to rescue first. So it, it's kind of weird. You know, during the course of the night time with this game, I never really had to worry about grinding for animals, but I do find the removal of this feature a little bit odd, primarily because if you... There's loads of players who won't be nearly as explorative as me, and they'll literally go through the game with the GOTTA GO FAST mentality. So, um, just the removal of this is a little bit jarring to me. However, I, during the course of my playthrough, I've always, I always had just enough animals to get through past Act 4 and continue through the game, so I didn't have to grind once during the course of my playthrough, but, you know, other players may have to, and it's the, the lack of making it easier for them to grind, just, I don't know, it's just... It's, it's such a weird feature to remove. On the PC version in particular, however, you shouldn't have too many issues unlocking the stages because the animal requirement has dropped significantly from the Wii U release, probably due to the fact that the circus tents are missing. Every second or fourth act of each zone as well is a boss level. You play through a short stage as per normal, however you will have an annoying voice pest you throughout the course of the whole thing, which I personally find a little bit annoying and distracting. There's that little punk! I've been dreaming about pounding his sorry blue butt! And I, I sort of get that they're trying to hype up the upcoming boss battle, but the boss fights themselves tend to be very basic and they usually revolve around the whole wait for him to attack, counter, rinse and repeat method. They definitely could use some improvements in, in some way to try and make the boss battles a little bit more interesting. In fact, each boss battle usually goes down into a f in about two fully charged homing attacks, resulting in most of the battles in the game lasting for about 15 seconds at the most. Now obviously this doesn't apply to every boss fight, however, for the most part, almost every boss fight is abnormally weak. They all need to be buffed up in some way, shape or form because it's just too easy to get through each of these boss battles. Now again, this doesn't apply to every boss fight in the game, but... You know. Though don't get me wrong, this game is definitely not a walk in the park. Or at least it's not when you're collecting all of the red rings. You're very likely to find yourself die again and again and again and again into a number of traps that present themselves to you. Whether it be a bottomless pit or instant death bombs, most of which generally seem to be around the same area of a red ring. However, getting from point A to point B in the level is pretty easy, assuming you'll learn and figure out how Sonic maneuvers properly. And while it is true that Sonic generally controls good during the course of this game, in fact he even control he seems to control a lot better than he does in the Wii U version, but that could just be a little controller bias on my part. This game does offer a uh, parkour system in which you will be able to climb, vault or run across obstacles so long as you keep the run button held down. You know, ultimately this isn't too bad when you get used to using it, but uh, doing so can take a little bit of time. And the game itself isn't too much help in this regard, as the game doesn't do the best job of conveying its information to you. To get help with the basicest of basic mechanics, you'll need to wait for a question mark prompt to pop up on screen, and then you'll need to press a certain button, for example in the case of the controller I was using, the back button, and then boom, you get information. It's a little bit easier on this version of the game as opposed to the Wii U version where you had to um, you had to look at the gamepad specifically to get information on uh, basic tutorial moves and what have you. So, you know, this, they kind of improved that a little bit since the Wii U release. 
Though honestly, I feel they should have added in some sort of short tutorials level that is skippable in order to teach the players the basic mechanics. Kind of similar to what Sonic Heroes did way back in the day, which it would have solved a lot of issues, specifically when I did my first playthrough of the game. So players know exactly how to take advantage of the parkour system and how, how to fully utilize it to get through the levels. Also, from time to time, this game falls into the usual Sonic game trap of automated gameplay. And while this is a rarish occurrence, you'll find that sometimes control will be completely taken off your hands, as Sonic bounces to a separate floating island or landmass, or in the case of Desert Ruins, a full 10 to 30 seconds of literally pressing nothing. <laughs> As I said earlier, it's a bit of a rare occurrence though, it never gets the levels of Sonic 06 level of no obnoxiousness of just holding nothing for about 30-40 seconds. This only seems to be the real, real major level with this issue, Desert Ruins, so uh... Upon clearing each level as well, you'll unlock access to the time attack and ranking options for each corresponding level that you clear. In this mode, you can actually try and get the fastest times and run through each stage. And you're even ranked on how well you do once you reach the end of it. Oh right, yeah! I almost forgot! The rankings from whenever you clear normal levels, like that were in previous games, for example, the A ranks, S ranks, it, the grading system that have been in games since Sonic Adventure 2, that usually tells you how you've been doing in the levels, that's no longer present during the course of the main, main stages in this one. So fans of that sort of system will be happy to know they are still in the game in some shape or form. Hell, you can even look at the how well you stack up against other player players on the leaderboards, although good luck going anywhere near the people in the top 10, because some of the speeds they get through these stages are ridiculous, I don't know how some of them are possible. And of course, finally, I can't talk about a Sonic game without talking about the soundtrack of the game. Oh my god! The soundtrack in this game is absolutely glorious, it's definitely up with the standards of the, the previous entries in the series. <laughs> So yeah, definitely the music, in my opinion, is way up there with the previous entries in the Sonic franchise. In fact, the only real annoyance I can sort of say about the soundtrack is that I really want a new rocking vocal track akin to the Adventure series. Although, honestly, at this point, I'm sort of nitpicking with that. So this is a new take on a long-running franchise where, in a lot of places, Sega seemed to have thrown a lot of ideas at it in the hopes that some of the ideas would stick. The abysmal second act of Frozen Factory is an example of one of those ideas that didn't stick very well. And for the most part, this provides a decent template that I feel the developers should return to and refine in the future. There's a, there's a lot of potential in this new gameplay formula. And with a little tweaking to the controls, the level design, better wish power ups wouldn't hurt too much either, this could be a great gameplay style for the foreseeable future for everyone's favourite blue blur. Ultimately, I feel that this is an okay Sonic game. Now, truth be told, it is nowhere near as good as Generations or Sonic Colors. Those are games I would greatly recommend over this one. However, this is still an okay experience and it is still far from a bad game. It is a good but flawed game. And with a little bit of fine tuning or with a little bit of refinement, I could see this gameplay style becoming great for the future of the franchise. I mean, it, it basically, it's basically a perfect perfect baseline of what a new gameplay style of Sonic could actually be. But of course, who knows what the future holds, and this is a very experimental game anyway, so we'll just have to wait and see. But I would definitely recommend it, and uh, I believe we can get the Wii U version for tr pretty cheap nowadays. And of course, the Steam version is £20 or your regional equivalent. So, um... Yeah, it's hardly an expensive game nowadays. I'd, I'd say I'd say it's worth a pickup. I'd say it's recommended. So uh, yeah, with that, that will be the closing for the review. So thank you all for watching.
and I hope to see you again. Bye!